G'day folks and welcome to another portrait sketch where I share my process and insights of how I go about producing a portrait from beginning to end. In this video I thought I'd do something a little different and do a portrait of a popular dog breed, the Cane Corso. I think these dogs are quite appealing and I thought that it would make an ideal subject. The process is similar to when I do a human portrait. In this case I try to replicate the distance from the top of the head to the level of the eye, the snout and the chin. I then gauge the width of the top of the head and then use the angle of the ears to get the basic head shape. I'm just lightly using my pencil to put these lines in as I'm not certain that everything is correct at this point. I'm always measuring, checking my reference, using angles and distances to try and get the proportions right. It's always good to use your pencil as lightly as possible just laying in light lines, readjusting if you have to. At this point of the drawing I'm quite confident that the proportions are correct. Uh, still checking my reference and making measurements. Um, you see there I was checking the distance between the eye and the side of the head. Just making small adjustments. You can see here that uh, now I'm slightly starting to lightly put in the shadows at this stage I'm measuring the distance between the top of the snout to the eye and looking at how the shadow forms around the head making sure that shapes correct once I'm sure that the feature is in the right place I usually go a little bit darker with the pencil when I was coming to this ear I noticed that it was a little bit out of shape so I just made some slight adjustments. I didn't bother about rubbing it out because I knew I'd probably do some cleaning up with the eraser later on in the drawing. So here you see me establishing the other eye, just making it a little bit darker. Coming down to the muzzle, adding in the shadows. There's a lot of different uh, textures in the dog face so it's a little bit more difficult than a human face so just trying to make aware of um, the shadows that are on the muzzle and here I am making adjustments to the nose making sure that the nostrils are in the right place just building up the shadow areas and now I'm working on to the bottom of the chin under the neck trying to establish the shadows. In this particular area some shadows were a lot darker than others but still using the side of my pencil making sure that I just do it lightly first and once I'm satisfied with the right shape that it makes then I usually go back and go in a little bit darker. Just a reminder if you enjoy this video I encourage you to hit the like button and if you'd like to subscribe for further videos in the future please do so. If you've got any questions just leave a comment below and uh, I'll see if I can answer that question for you as best I can. At this stage of the drawing I'm quite happy how things are going, just making some finer adjustments to the outlines and to the ear, establishing uh, a few darker areas with my pencil. Uh, I'll soon go in with my 2B pencil and just start darkening those shadows and add more details as the drawing goes along. Here I am just rubbing the surface of the drawing with my finger just to get rid of those scratchy lines that I've left there. And now I'm going in with my 2B pencil and start establishing the dark areas. I usually start with the eyes because that's what most people look at first is the eyes of a portrait. That's the way our brains are designed apparently. I'm taking careful attention of how the shadow shapes are in the eyes because I usually have most troubles with eyes because if you don't get them right it makes the drawing look really off.
You can see here I'm going over the light shadow shapes that I made earlier and just darkening them with the 2B pencil. That's why I only put the light shadows in first. That way I can sort of see where I'm going with the darker shapes of the shadows. Just making adjustments here and there. It's always a good to go lighter. It's easier to go from light to dark than dark to light because if you go too dark and you try rubbing it out most times you'll smudge your paper or it just makes it all messy. You might rub out areas that you don't mean to. It's always good to start from light to dark. So I'm curious to know what sort of pet do you have? Are you a dog person or a cat person, a bird person or a guinea pig person? In my lifetime I've had three dogs. I've had a fox terrier when I was younger and I've had two Staffordshire Bull Terriers. Apart from dogs I've had birds as well. I've had budgies, I've had a pigeon and I've had a galah. Uh, I've also had guinea pigs, uh, rats and the most exotic pet that I've had is a sugar glider possum. And of course that's not even counting the fish or the insects that I've had over the years. When I was younger, living at my parents, they had a pony stud and of course they had quite a few ponies so I had plenty of opportunity to ride horses in my younger days. So if you feel like sharing what animals you had or what you have at the moment, let us know in the comments. I really am curious to see what uh, pets people have these days. I hear exotic pets like um, scorpions and spiders and snakes they seem to be the rave at the moment. Yeah, let us know in the comments and um, maybe it'll inspire me to draw a portrait of your favourite animal in a future video. If you enjoyed watching this process, then I encourage you to look at some of the other videos that I've got going at the moment of uh, how I do portraits. Here I am just laying in light shadows on the light side of the face uh, just establishing some of the areas that are darker in value at this point I'm just lightly putting in shadow areas on the lighter side of the face just going really lightly hardly touching the page because I'm using the 2B pencil just adding light little marks here and there making sure I am checking my reference, seeing where the shadows go, how dark they are on the reference photo. Apparently there's three different types of the Cane Corso uh, breed of dog. There's the American, the Italian and the Puglies. I have to admit that I'm more partial to the American breed. I'm not really fond of the Italian breed with the way they have their ears. Although they do look like the wargs from Lord of the Rings which are pretty cool and they do look pretty scary I'd certainly hate to go up against one of those in a fight I've now switched to my 4B pencil now I'm just going to add the really dark areas particularly in the uh, nostrils and the uh, muzzle none of the chin and some of the real dark areas just, just enough in the eyes just to make them pop it's usually at this stage of the drawing I really enjoy it because I've done most of the hard work and it's now just relaxing and adding the small details particularly in the eyes and the nostrils and those small dark areas like near the ears and underneath the chin and the muzzle. Now I'm just using my needle bill eraser to clean up some of the white spaces around the portrait and just slightly adding a few more little details such as the whiskers. If you've made it this far in the video and enjoyed listening to me ramble along, hit the like button and let me know what you liked and didn't like, as I'm always open to hear how I can improve my videos. I thank you all for your support and encouragement, and I hope to see you in the next video. Cheers for now.